Hi, I'm Diane Hendricks and welcome to Fresh to Frozen and Back. This show is going to make your life easier. In each episode, I'll show you how to prepare delicious and better for you meals, how to freeze them properly, and then bring them back to the table, dress them back up and bring them back to life at a later date. This show is all about snacks. I'm calling it Snack Attack. When you get hungry in the middle of the day or later at night, it's, it's a good option, obviously, to eat something that's a little bit better for you, but you want to enjoy it. You want it to be delicious. So I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite snacks. Okay, starting with roasted chickpeas. Chickpeas are so good, chichi beans, garbanzo beans, whatever you call them. Um, if you use them canned, you just drain them and rinse them. And, or you can soak uh, dry beans overnight and then boil them up and boil them for about an hour to an hour and a half. So you can go either way, but if you do use the can, just make sure you drain them. So what you do is you just put your cooked chickpeas into a bowl and then add your favorite spices. Here I have a combination of paprika, chili powder, oregano, garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. And then I'm gonna add a, a little bit of olive oil good high quality olive oil. I'm using Loy Lati, which is delicious, from Crete, fabulous. And then I'm just gonna mix this up. So you're just mixing it up. You've got all these delicious flavors on them. If you wanna do them like with different types of flavors, so say you wanted something like a little Latin or Mexican, you could use cilantro and, and oregano and garlic and all different spices. If you wanted to use some sesame oil, you could get in a little bit of soy sauce. You can get like an Asian spice to it as well. So what you're going to do then is take it, the chickpeas. This is something you'll want to make in bulk too. So if you're using cans, make like four or five cans because they freeze beautifully. Then you just put them on an even layer on a baking sheet. So you hold a parchment line and then shake it out so it's really even. Keep them on the parchment. If you get any guys that fall off, just keep them on the parchment. And then you're just gonna stick them in the oven and roast them until, it depends. Once you first make them, you'll know how you like them. The longer you leave them in the oven, the crispier they're gonna get. Then if you take them out, you know, 10 minutes before they get really crispy, you have this nice texture, but they're still soft on the inside. So there's a bunch of ways to do it. You're gonna have to experiment. So stick it in the oven. 350 degrees for about 20 minutes to a half an hour, all the way up to almost an hour. And what you end up with are, these are chickpeas that I've roasted. I'm just gonna do this so you can hear the sound. Listen. You can hear how crispy they are and they're absolutely delicious. So these are super crispy and these make a nice snack when you add something to them. You can just pop them in your mouth like this. But if you wanna make a really delicious snack, you can take your chickpeas, take some of them, put them in a bowl, keep the rest. These, these are like um, a healthier version, like a pretzel or a potato chip. You get that kind of hand to mouth, kind of munchy thing from it, which is really great. And you get a ton of nutrition. I sent my kids to school with these 
all the time and they absolutely love them. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna add some more ingredients to this and make like a little salad, a crunchy salad. So I have some diced uh, cucumber, I've got some tomato. So what I like to do, because I like uniformness in my, oh. like if my uh, cucumbers are that small, I don't want these big fat chunks of tomato. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I always save this because I'll use that, I'll just put some little bit of salt and pepper on that and just munch it. So go straight down the size that you want and then just go turn it and then just go across so you have the same exact uniform sizes. Yum. Tomatoes are so good. I'm from Jersey. Can't beat our tomatoes. Or our corn. Or our blueberries. Or just about anything else Jersey. I'm a proud Jersey girl. Okay. So we've got the tomatoes in there. Then I'm going to use a little bit of red onion. Just a little. I don't want too much. Um, a little bit of lemon or lime juice or citrus juice. You can add orange juice too. Orange juice makes a nice flavor. And some hot red pepper flakes because I like a little spice. But you don't have to add it. And then you just mix it all up. It's a little bowl with all these chickpeas. And that lemon juice is going to kind of re-soften up those chickpeas just slightly. But this is absolutely delicious. You can just throw this in a, like what I'll do is I'll take like a to-go coffee cup and I'll just throw this in a to-go coffee cup with a spoon and just kind of eat it as a snack. And because the uh, beans have a good balance of protein and carbohydrates, it sustains you for a really long time. So this is a very satisfying and fulfilling snack because of the nutrition in the beans that you're using. So there we have snack number one of our snack attack. Okay, so now let's go to snack number two, which is a quick guacamole. Okay, so a quick guacamole. So we have a avocado. I had already cut it in half, but when you cut it, you just go straight down and I kind of just twist it. So it's cut in half and then you're gonna get the pit out. Now the easiest way to get the pit out is to kind of stab it with your knife, but if you're not skilled with a knife, do it on top of your cutting board. But if you are, you can just go like that and then you just twist your wrist and the pit comes out. And then to get it off, you just hit the knife on the side of your cutting board and the pit will pop right off of it and then you just throw it in the garbage. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna score the avocado. Um, so you're gonna go straight down my, I'm not, I, I had a joke about that that my sister used to tell, but I'm not gonna tell that one now. Um, you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go straight down, again, if you're not skilled with it, you can do it right on your cutting board, because you don't wanna go through, obviously, and cut your hand. You're just gonna, ow, kidding. <laughs> okay, so you're just gonna go straight down, and then you're gonna turn it, and you're gonna go across this way. And this way you get a nice little chunk. So even though we're gonna mash it up a little bit, it makes it easier to get out. And then we're going to find a spoon, which I don't have one, but we're gonna use this little spatula. You go in the corner and then you just go around it and all of the avocado will pop out just like that. And always keep your eye out for this little guy because for some reason he always wants to fall into, the little end piece always wants to fall into your, uh, whatever you're making. So pull it out first or just keep your eye out for it. And then just do the same thing on the other side. And I'll do it real quick. You can do this with a mango as well. So if you do this with a mango, once you cut your mango and you score it, then with the mango, you just turn it out and all of those little pieces stay in little individual squares and then you can hand it to your kids. I always used to send mine outside because it's so juicy, but you can just hand it to your kids and send them outside. But mangoes have those strings in them. My son used to walk in the house after he ate his mango and just go, mango teeth like that and I just have to get it out. So you can do that, it doesn't work with an avocado but you can try it and it didn't work. So then anyway, you're just gonna get all of this out. That's good. And now, tomatoes are optional. Here's some more chopped avocado because you can't go wrong with guacamole. It's so good on everything. You can put this on anything. It's grated on top of an omelet, anything, you name it, just chips and dip, it's so good. Uh, tomatoes are optional. My one kid likes tomatoes in it, my other one doesn't. They both love onion in it. You can do this in what's called a mortar and pestle or a mocajeta, which is like this stone. You've seen the, they're on four legs. It's like a stone mortar and pestle where you can grind the onion into the cilantro and it gets really nice. Then we have cilantro, lime juice, and a hit of salt. And this is the quickest guacamole 
and it's so good. Now you can do it however you want. Like you can just keep this chunky, but you could mash it with a potato masher or you could use a fork. So it just depends on how you like it. If you want it mashed up, you just use the fork. But make sure you use a really, really ripe avocado. That's another fabulous snack that you can put on anything. Okay. Okay, we have a quick uh, blue cheese dip for these McCain Dippin' Wedges. They are so delicious. These, these were, they have little pockets in them, but they're so nice and crispy. But these little, corner pockets seem to kind of just grab everything and it just tastes so good. There are um, no artificial colors or flavorings and it's made with 100% potatoes. They're so good. Okay, so we're gonna make this quick dipping sauce. It's so simple and so easy. I love blue cheese. I mean, I just love it. So we have a little bit of Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt, and some, a little bit of sour cream. Then we've got some crumbled blue cheese. And we have a little bit of dill, dried dill. A hit of salt, tiny little hit of salt, and some black pepper. And we're gonna kind of whip this all up together. And this makes such a great dipping sauce for these wedges. So good. You can actually put a little bit of hot sauce on here and do like a buffalo kind of thing, or you can just dip them right in there and then they, it just makes such a great, great dipping sauce. Okay, so we'll leave that over there. So you've got your McCain, the dip and wedges with the blue cheese dip, which is fabulous. Then, a peanut butter cup yogurt. It's so good and so simple. You're gonna take plain, plain Greek yogurt. You're gonna add some natural chunky or smooth peanut butter. It doesn't matter. This is enough for two, so we're gonna do enough for two two tablespoons or so. Then we're gonna add some almond extract. It smells so good. You want it the pure extracts and vanilla extract. Then we're gonna add some honey. And I'm using this wild forest black honey. So good, you don't need that much. And we're gonna whisk this all together. It's so delicious. It tastes like a peanut butter cup. It tastes like a Reese's peanut butter cup once we stir in the chocolate chips. Now we're just gonna add some chocolate chips and you're gonna use semi-sweet. You don't need all that sweetness in there because we have that delicious honey and all those other flavors in there. And then you're just gonna stir that in. It's so good. If you wanna throw some fresh whipped cream on there, you can do that. You can actually use this as a dip, which is good too, for berries. Oh my gosh, let's doctor that, uh, garnish that up with a couple of chocolate chips. I'm telling you, it's so simple. And that, if you have a sweet tooth, that will satisfy it in a healthier way. Okay, and last but not least, we're gonna make a smoothie. We're gonna do a tropical smoothie. So you take your blender and we are going to, I'm gonna need some ice. I'm gonna have to get some ice. We've got a little yogurt, a little low fat milk. I've got a banana. This is gonna be for two. 
some pineapple, strawberries. Now for the strawberries, once they're washed, you don't need to take the tops off. That just gets all blended up, gives you a little extra fiber. And the calories in strawberries are very low and the berries are so good for you. And then just a couple more items. We're gonna add some toasted unsweetened coconut. This is just some oats. And some nuts and a little vanilla extract. So good and so easy. Then you just blend it all up. Okay, so I got ice. Now what I do at home is I freeze my berries. Like all the fruit that I put in there would be frozen in my freezer. So I'd have frozen pineapple chunks, frozen strawberries, frozen berries, frozen grapes, whatever you want to use. Because that way you're not adding ice, which is water and there's not a lot of flavor. So it's better off to use the fruit that you're using as the ice cubes and then you don't get, a, you don't get a watery flavor. You get all fruit and deliciousness. Yum, and that looks so good. And smoothies freeze wonderfully. So you can take a smoothies and put them in a container, whatever you have left, and then just stick it in your freezer. And then the next time you make one, so you can just take this, pour this in here, put a lid on it, date it with a Sharpie and uh, masking tape. Just date what it is, uh, label it as what it is, date it, stick it in your freezer. Next time you take it out, let it defrost a bit, put it right back in the blender and blend it up and you have a delicious smoothie. The last thing is the um, chickpeas. Let me tell you, once you roast them up, you just put them in a Ziploc bag, label them and throw them in your freezer and they freeze beautifully. When you bring them out of the freezer, like I was saying, you dress them back up and bring them back to life, throw them right back on a baking sheet, throw them right in the oven, and you've got for like 10 minutes at 350 and you've got yourself a nice snack. Thanks for watching Fresh to Frozen and Back. Uh, please follow me on social media, share this episode with your friends and family and those that you love. I'm at Diane Hendricks on social media, subscribe to my YouTube channel and tune in next time. Looking forward to seeing you. Thanks and I'll see you next time. Cheers.